Hey, I'm Barrick. I like to make stuff. I like to talk about making stuff. And today I'm going to talk about making this ruin stone. Last week, I made a video talking about the props that we made for our movie called Spell. And there were these magical rune stones in the movie. And I was always jealous I didn't get to make one. So I made a miniature version of one. And I'm going to show you exactly step by step how I did this uh, and some of my philosophies on making and painting fake rocks. Also, hey, if you've been watching these videos, I. I just want to say I really appreciate it. it it's it's meaningful. People say they've been sent me nice messages and it's cool. I appreciate it. Let's talk about making fake rocks. So the first thing I did is get on my iPad and sketch this out. I didn't want to get into a design I was really locked in. I kind of wanted to wing it and, and feel it as I made it. But I was looking for general shapes and I found one I liked and kind of had some color ideas I liked and then bam. It was time to make that rock. Let's talk materials. I think the best thing to use for art supplies are things that are already made for a whole other purpose. Otherwise, they're going to be really expensive. Like, I don't know if you've ever looked into buying a block of foam, but it's crazy pricey. But there's insulation foam. They sell at every Home Depot and you use that and it's great. It's like five or six bucks a sheet. You know, a lot of people use molds to make rocks. Like they'll take a real rock and they'll make a mold and then they'll cast it and then they'll use that. And I, I think it'll look nice, but you can skip all that because this, this pink insulation foam, when you break it or scrape it, it, it looks like a real rock. Rocks are a solid giant thing that has been broken a lot, like a strong lead female character. <laughs> the world has shattered this thing. Small cracks have formed and it deepened and it caused this rock to fall away for something bigger. And then other rocks hit it and, and fell apart. And so it's just this thing full of random cracks. But then also there are lines in a rock that are, are made because it's just a bunch of sediments crammed together and formed to a rock. And then as time goes by, some of those layers of sediments don't hold up as much as the others. So you have these through lines running. A lot of lines can be random, but then you also want to have some lines that go in the same direction. I mean, if you've never looked at a rock, you simply must try. I find foam breaks in a very similar way to rocks. So I get in there with my fingernails uh, I used a butter knife. I started scraping it, I snapping it off. You know, and as you're making this, you might go like, oh, I think I cut too much off. You're gonna end up with a ton of little pieces of foam that look exactly like rocks too. So just glue them back on. Then I got some heat. Uh, I tried a butane torch, which melts the foam and it kind of warps it. I think it wears it away like water. You can use a lot or a little, just make sure to do it outside because it is a Toxic mess. Also, I have a foam cutter and that gives like nice soft curves and I used it to make some of the uniform sediment lines in there. So just explore, get, get, get messy with it. If you mess up, it's foam. So just slice the piece you don't like off of it. I didn't actually like the top of this, so I cut it off. It looked too much like a butt plug, so I changed it. Once I got the rock to where I wanted it, I wanted to uh, make it stronger. So I coated it with some Mod Podge. The foam is pretty flimsy and I don't need this to be super strong, but if it falls off a wall, I don't want it to destroy the piece. Uh, let's talk texture. I wanted this to have kind of a gritty texture. So I used this stone spray, which has a bunch of like tiny pieces of something, gives it like this neat texture, but you gotta test it out beforehand because there's a good chance it could uh, melt your foam. I've earned so many foam rocks using the wrong stuff. Then I painted it. I put a base coat down. I went with something pretty neutral, kind of like a flat grayish brown. Then I put on random highlights here and there, thinking like, oh, the sun has been hitting this for a long time, so it'll be faded in certain areas. And some areas will be scraped off and those will be lighter now. And also like birds have been shitting on it for <laughs> a thousand years. Maybe salt from ocean spray. Rocks can have so many subtle depths of color and, and shading. I like to do lots of little light layers. I smear it on with a paper towel in my fingers. I mean, nature gets really random. So be just as random. You, if you make it like too pretty and too uniform, I think that'll catch your eye in the wrong way. I'm just making the highlights brighter and the shadows darker. Oh, I wanted to try painting lichen. I went to Utah a couple years ago and found the most beautiful colors and patterns on the rocks. Here, here's some here. Isn't that cool? Oh, I loved them. I want, so I wanted to 
try that. I've, I've been waiting ever since to do that in an art project. I put a little orange and I use a little yellow and then I use this like a light aquamarine. I thought that would be weird. Started dabbing it around. And again, like I wasn't trying to make it uniform. I think it came out cool. It's not exactly how I want it to be, but it's my first time doing it. So I think it's okay. In the future, uh, maybe I'll make the lichen thicker so you can actually like see it's raised above the rock. Hmm, we'll see. Then I wanted to put plants on it. I wanted several kinds of plants for texture and color. I started with a green lichen. I have this foam stuff. I have it's just too much of it. <laughs> you can get it at model railroad shops. So first I put the I put white glue down wherever I want it, you know, rub it in with my finger or brush it on. And then I made big, bold, random choices. I wanted to not honor the original composition of the rock because nature doesn't care about like what mankind does. So I thought like, oh, maybe this lichen is, is, is covering up some of the rune stones. And I'll cover up some of the details, but that's fine. Then I added some moss, which you can get at the same model railroad shops, give it that nice thicker texture. And I bought a bunch of tiny flowers from craft stores. I usually feel like using other pre-made leaves and flowers as cheating because I didn't make them. I always think like someone's gonna look at my piece and go, he cheated. He didn't make the flowers. No one's gonna think that. And if they do, uh, yeah, you got me. <laughs> I made my art project a slightly easier on myself, I'm pretty embarrassed. Once you get all this stuff down, you wanna hit it with a mixture of glue and water. It's just like 50-50 and you spray it on there and that'll stick everything together and in, into the fake rock so it's not like falling off from then on. Okay, the grass. This is the new thing I've never tried before. So I went to the fashion district downtown where you can find all kinds of fabrics and I know there's this one store I've used when making puppets because they sell shaggy fabrics, which ruled. I was looking for basically the skin of Oscar the Grouch. Making fake grass is so hard and it always looks so bad. So I used something that was made for something else and I repurposed it and now I could get like the most beautiful fake grass. I used my beard trimmer to give it just random swells. I wanted it to look messy. But then I, I hit it with hairspray and I, I put some of my hair product in there and I hit it with some spray glue and then I combed it out and I formed it. Man, I just loved how it looks like it's it's in the wind. It, it made it look so magical. So that's how I made it. And then I, I put it back on it and I put a little thing to hang it on and uh, I should probably sign it. That's how I made this. I made another one that's bigger and uh, I'll, let me go show you that. Here's the bigger one. I don't love the colors of this just as much, but I'm not gonna tell anybody that. I'm glad I made two because then I, I had a favorite to choose from. I know I threw this all at you a lot, but there's a million tutorials. There's this guy named Luke Toen. I think that's how you say his name. It's this Australian dude that makes the most amazing scenery. I do not work like him because he goes slow, but um, it's beautiful. He's got so many great techniques. I just do it fast and dirty. I, I try to get done with my ideas before I get uh, bored with them. I, I, I'd love to see if you come up with something. If this helped you at all, like take a picture, uh, send it to me on Twitter. I'm on everything at Barrick Hardly, and dude, I'd love to see. Some of my old videos, I get pretty down on myself about making things. I think you can tell I'm not enjoying it, and uh, I've been thinking about why that is. I came to some cool conclusions, and uh, I'll share them with you in the next video. Yeah, I think I stumbled upon something that's pretty useful for me. So again, looking forward to sharing it. All right, I'll see you around next time. Have a good one.